Hi BTN, I'm Emerson and this is a story of how my friends at Epping North Public School have helped raise awareness about the koalas in Campbelltown. With all the challenges facing the koalas, we thought they needed some help, so we decided to act. So can you please introduce yourselves to the BTN audience? I'm Evie. I'm Isabel. I'm Scarlett. And we're, we're from, from North, North Epping, Epping Public, Public School. So why did you decide to help the koalas? So one day in class, we were watching an episode of BTN Classroom. One of the topics in that was that koalas just got moved to the endangered list and that made me feel really sad and worried because I really want to help them because they're a very important animal to Australia. So me and my friends decided to make a cake and lemonade stand to raise money for them. So how much money did you raise and what did it go towards? We raised around $1,000 and donated it to Port Macquarie Koala Hospital to help save koalas. So can you tell us a bit about the big koala picnic and what happened? So me and my friends took part in the big koala picnic. Then we posted a video of all of us making little messages and writing them down. So who saw the video? Well, some people from Save Sydney Koalas watched the video and decided to invite the group that went to the big koala picnic and um, a walkthrough of the natural koala habitat to spot some wild koalas. Hi everybody, welcome to Campbelltown. My name's Swayla and I am from Greater Sydney Land Care. Um, we are partners of the Southwest Sydney Koala Project. And I understand that there was a video made at a recent big koala picnic. That was so fantastic because that video was sent to Save Sydney Koalas, which is one of the koala stakeholders that I work with. So it was a bit of a, a connection, a koala connection across Sydney, wasn't it? Behind us, Smiths Creek Reserve, which is a Campbelltown Council Reserve, is managed as a wildlife corridor, which is so important for our koalas, for our birds, for our, even kangaroos live down the back here. We think there might be about 20 koalas there. So, everybody, as a koala scientist, the traditional way of finding koalas apart from looking up in trees, was to walk through the bush and look on the ground for this. And this is a koala scat, or another word for it, you know what it is, it's koala poo, right? Pretty, pretty interesting to pick one up, to break it in half and smell it. I think some of you have already done that, but the, the most obvious smell from smelling this scat is Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. Very mm, good. It definitely smells like eucalyptus. Here, 90% of koalas like to eat the grey gum, which is the tree behind me, uh, Eucalyptus punctata. I'm here in South Sydney with local koala expert Barry. Yeah, the, this particular tree has got lots of different scratches. Some people think that if they see a scratch, it's straight away as a koala, but a koala leaves di distinctive scratches. They're normally 45 degrees and there's a pair of them. Like down here we've got a pair and over here we have a pair. Right there. And you see those two scratches there? One, yeah. One there and one there. Yeah. And that is uh, uh, basically uh, what you're looking for. They're pretty deep, actually. How many koalas populate the Campbelltown area? Numbers don't really count but distribution really matters. So if you break their corridor, they inbreed. What is a koala corridor? One that connects one lot of bushland to another, but it's no good having a very small koala corridor. It has to be wide enough for them to disperse. If they don't like each other, they will fight. And male koalas are known to fight to death. So lots of people think that koalas just stay in trees, but how do they get around? They don't go from one tree to another like a monkey. They actually come down a tree and then walk along and then up another tree. 
one of the biggest dangers to some of the koalas in the wild. Our biggest threat in Campbelltown is habitat because without habitat, the koala is gone. It was just fantastic having um, the girls from you know, North Epping um, Public School. They've generated a story um, which um, they need to be aware of. I mean, the reason we're all out here, um, you know, fighting and protecting and making sure that the koalas are prioritised and not the major developers in this area, is so that they can come and see a koala on the edge of Sydney. And it is looking much more hopeful because of the efforts that they've made. And so I just think that that's fantastic. And I just, you know, if all the other kids, if you're watching it, you know, home at the moment and something, you know, get involved um, and participate. And maybe you can think of other ideas or participate and do something similar to what they're doing. It's just been terrific. Scarlett, you said that you were feeling sad and worried about the koalas. So what would you say to other students who are also feeling sad and worried? That even though they're little and not an adult, they can still do something about it. And even the littlest thing can help. Thank you for sharing your story with BTN. Now that you've seen what these girls have done, imagine if all schools could achieve the same. Thank you for watching BTN.